up on ATV News. USU introduced a new seating policy, how you can get a ticket and have more time on game day. It's back to the books, but it was a busy summer in sports. We'll get you caught up on everything in my Grizzly Adams Sports Report. It's illegal waiting weather. I'll tell you how long that's going to last on the seven day forecast. And if you're not from Logan, but want to park on campus, you may have to do more than buy a parking pass. But what if you can't find a place to park? The new rules, the locations, and the stalls. All coming up on ATV News. Welcome to our first show of the semester on ATV News. I'm Becky Eisenhower. And I'm Ileana Barunda. We are just settling into our newly renovated studio and we are excited to share the latest news with you. A local woman will be paying for a Thursday ambulance ride in spite of her best efforts to avoid it. The Logan Fire Department responded to IHC Instacare after a woman lost consciousness around 3.45 Thursday afternoon. The patient was brought in by her husband who described symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. She then lost consciousness and was transferred to the emergency room at Logan Regional Hospital in an ambulance. The woman was working at Intermountain Pallet Company in Hyde Park when she initially collapsed. Both Smithfield Fire and North Park Police Departments investigated the site, but neither could find signs of carbon monoxide. USU has adopted a new parking pass policy, and it could end up costing you. For some USU students, parking just got a little more expensive. The state of Utah um, has a cleaner act. The clean air policy was adopted by Cache County in January, requiring that all cars meet emissions regulations. And now USU is requiring the same compliance on all parking pass sales. The administration told us that in August that we were going to try our best to adopt that. So what that means is whether you're from out of state or from a county that doesn't require emissions testing, you will have to have an emissions test in order to get a pass. Out of the 5,000 parking passes that the university sold, about 250 of the cars had to have an emissions test. That means one out of every 20 are paying extra. USU students were asked for their input over a year ago, but their response may surprise you. The summer of 2013, uh, USUSA conducted a survey, survey among students with some options about emissions testing. Um, and, and one of those options did include uh, a requirement before someone could purchase a parking pass that they have an emissions test. And uh, the response was overwhelmingly, no, we don't want any part of it. In fact, over 62% of those polled did not think that USU should make emissions testing a requirement for a parking pass. But the university still voluntarily adopted the policy. Um, I'm a little disappointed that students weren't more involved in the process of creating the policy or more aware that the policy had been adopted. Aaron Griffiths, ATV News. For more information on parking or to buy a parking pass, visit parking.usu.edu. If you drive to school, your, new ca your car might have to find a place to wait while you're in class. After fall break, the toll booth in the Big Blue Terrace is going to be staffed 24 hours Monday through Friday. Gone are the days when you could park before morning class and leave at 10 p.m. without paying. The blue lot just east of the terrace will staff its toll booth until 11 p.m. And unless you've purchased a blue pass, you'll be given an envelope and expected to pay your fee before taking off. If you need somewhere to, buy, to park but don't want to buy a parking pass, USU student advocate Casey Saxton recommends the red lot behind the library, but adds those student spaces are only available after 5 p.m. Saxton, who is also the student liaison for the parking office, says he isn't aware of any complaints about the changes, but that you should let them know using the My Voice platform if you have one. The My Voice platform can be found at my.usu.edu. If you're heading to the game this weekend and you expect to get in with just this, you'll be left out. Our Missy England is live on the quad with more about the new student ticket policy. Missy? 
That's right, Ileana. I'm here on the quad where last season you would see students camping out the day before a game to try and get in early and get the best seats. But now they'll have to take that wait to the TSC card office the Monday before a game to get tickets. This way students can spend less time in line on game day and more time at pregame activities like tailgating. Cheering on Aggie football used to be simple. But now there's a few extra steps to take before this could be you. With the new policy, students must now get tickets in advance. Ticket lines open the Monday morning before a home game at 7 a.m. Students swipe their cards and then they're given tickets, each with a specific section and row number that they will be required to sit in on game day. One thing students don't like about the new assigned seating is that they can't sit with a big group of friends. But athletic officials say each student can bring up to five cards to swipe. This way, students can spend more time hanging out rather than camping out. The point of the assigned seating is to give students the opportunity to be a part of things that football has before the game actually starts. On game day, students must have their ticket and their student ID to get into the game. Once through the gate, ushers will help students find their seats to make sure they are sitting in the right place. Student reaction to this policy so far has been mixed. I think it makes it more fun for everyone. You don't have to camp out all day on game day. You can kind of hang out with friends and tailgate if you really want to. I don't really like it because I think we're like college students and we want to just have like spur of the moment plans. The athletics office says even though students might not be down with the changes, they hope attendance will go up filling all 6,500 student seats since they won't have to worry about finding a spot. We aren't getting to our student capacity and that's a lot due to the fact that students will drive by earlier in the day and see a long line and just make the assumption that all the student tickets are being going to be used because quote how long the line is. Even though athletics believes the new policy is a good thing, it's still a trial run. But for now, this is literally your ticket to the games. They'll be watching to see how the seats fill up as well as how many students are coming to the tailgating. And from there, they'll decide whether or not they keep this new policy for men's basketball games too. So you may see this policy stick around or you may not. But they're going to decide that later in the season. Back to you, Ileana. Thanks, Misty. Coming up after the break, most of us run on roads, sidewalks, and treadmills. Now a new place for running can help your joints. Loaded your bikers took to the road over the weekend and one of them is blind. Need an adventure? The outdoor recreation program at USU offers a wide variety of rental equipment. From winter gear like skis, snowshoes, and snowboards to summer must-haves like kayaks, rafts, and camping gear. From sleeping bags to Dutch oven necessities, we have it all. So stop in and see us. Located at 950 East, 1000 North, in the basement of the distribution building behind Romney Stadium, we're open Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So stop in or call to get your gear today. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. This summer, a Logan landmark has been closed down. But police say it's not for good. This is the base of a canyon where the concrete jungle is just up above. It's become an eyesore because there was so much graffiti up there. And it really was covered in graffiti. As you can see from these pictures, from before the trail closed. All the abstract shapes and everything, it's a really great place to add pictures and add art to your pictures. It had spread onto forest service land and onto the rocks and pretty trees. I mean, it was just getting completely out of hand. You can see the graffiti was painted over, but people have already started painting it back. Here at the mouth of the canyon, just past First Dam, lies the trail to the concrete jungle. But now, regardless of what you're doing up there, you can get a misdemeanor. And after you cross the bridge, 
you are warned not to continue up the steep trail. So if people are found up there, they are being issued citation. But people are suing up there for the view. And police say the graffiti is beginning to spread past the concrete. So it's kind of sad that a lot of people aren't experiencing that opportunity. People will not be so comfortable in bringing their, their spray paint and feeling like it's okay to, to put their graffiti on, on every surface. And police hope the public can enjoy the trail again in 2015 when it's made safer. Lieutenant Peterson also said the concrete jungle is on the city's priority list and hopes it will be done in time for next summer. Has your smartphone made your life easier? Thanks to a tech-savvy group in Utah, there are a few more tools waiting to be found in your app store. And I hope that by the end of the night we're going to have everyone up here making a fool of themselves or hopefully spreading some really great ideas. In just 54 hours, these developers, designers, and entrepreneurs took turns turned pitches into products as a part of a startup weekend in Salt Lake City. We came not just for, hey, let's get our idea built. We came to just learn in general, and we did both, so it was win-win for that. People that start companies, you know, are developers that are just working right now, and they just have some ideas on the side. You never know what they're going to turn into. A few investors judge the final products ranging from a pay to snooze alarm clock to a system for selling leftover food. This is just one of five meetups in Utah. To find the one closest to you, go to startupweekend.org. The longest single day race in America kicked off in Logan last Saturday. About 2,000 cyclists showed up to test their limits all the way to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. The race kicked off in the early hours of the morning, but for Sachin Pavithron, who rides on the back of this tandem bike, darkness is the norm. Sachin, who is blind, teamed up with Ed Red two years ago and have been training for the 206 mile race ever since the duo are trying to promote disability awareness. Obviously I can't do the race on my own, so I'm doing it on a tandem. So there's different ways to accomplish the same things. To share this experience with him and be able to, for him to share his experience with me so I understand what it's, you know, I have a better understanding now, much better understanding of what it means to, to be visually impaired. Ed and Sachin accomplished their goal to finish the race on Saturday night with an overall time of 14 hours and 7 minutes. Exercising can be exhausting and I'm sure we've all experienced the day after the gym when our muscles are sore and we can't move from the couch. It's hard enough with a healthy body, but it's even harder for someone who has had surgery or has arthritis. Researchers are now providing a different kind of exercise for those people. And we went underwater to show you what that is. Jaron Miller isn't just walking in a pool of water. He's walking in a therapy tub. That also has a treadmill. The treadmills are soft, they're nice to run on. It's pretty good. But why use a water treadmill when you could just go to the gym and use a regular treadmill? You go into the water and you, you unload about 68% of your body weight. Exercise in the water has several very valuable benefits. So you can do a lot of things in the water uh, if you have joint pain that you couldn't do on land. We can have them walk, we can have them jog or run at a variety of paces. We use a technology called electromography to listen in on whether the muscles um, respond differently in water and they do. Many times people believe when you get in the water the effort and uh, physical exertion cannot match what you experience on land. With these jets at 100%, it simulates the aerobic effort needed to run up the steepest part of Old Main Hill. There does not seem to be a significant loss of muscle activation in water versus land, and there tends to be a more prolonged and a greater cumulative muscle activation in water versus land. So we really don't see, a, uh, especially a downside of providing buoyancy and, and support to the joints. With the positive results in the water that Dr. Brussel and Dr. Dolny have found on the joints and muscles, they're hoping to conduct research on other parts of the body, like the brain, in the upcoming months. Coming up after the break, ATV's David Matthew Stewart will have your Cache Valley weather forecast. The current temperature in Logan is 72 degrees. 
Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. You're level seven in your face, Pep Talk. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change the future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen. And you listen good. Hey! Where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you free GED classes. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey, everybody. Heart disease affects one in every three women in America. But you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends. It's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go. To the Batmobile. Dang it. To the invisible jet. Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. Welcome back. So, David, yesterday we had some pretty gnarly thunderstorms, no. and last week we did too. Today it's so sunny and warm. What is going on? You know, that's an excellent question that's being asked all over the country right now. Uh, September is pretty renowned for having kind of wacky weather, but more than usual, right now we've got some nuts, nuts so stuff going on. Let's go ahead and throw it over to the national radar here. Okay, so I've got, if you can see the, up here in the Midwest, we've got a lot of moisture falling. This is what kind of, I'm assuming this is what passed over us yesterday. Uh, we've got some moisture falling here in Texas, but if you go over here and look um, right up north of us here in Coming down from Canada, we've got some snow showers. One of the earlier, earliest snow showers on recorded history being recorded. Um, if we could uh, pop it on over to the Utah map, please. Thank you. If you'll, if you'll see here, we've got a little bit of some scattered moisture. Now the blue doesn't actually mean that there's any rain falling. It's just kind of clouds floating overhead. No rain, a little bit of rain over the Great Salt Lake, but nobody lives there. If we've got, but we do have, some sun, a lot of sun. Can we roll on over to the seven day? Please. Great. So, little orphan Annie, if you were wondering, the sun will come out tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Not a lot to say about it, you guys. We've got sun all week. It's going to be great. Um, if you go ahead and look to the end of the week here, still more sun. Sun on Sunday, sun on Monday, sun on Tuesday, all the way through the week. So, it's fall, but. That's awesome. Kind of. Sunny. And we've got some football games coming up this weekend. It looked yes. like it, it wasn't even going to get very cold at night, so yeah. it's going to be great. Should be a good day, unlike Tennessee a couple weeks yes. ago. Yeah, down, Rained down like call. crazy, uh. and that's not all that happened. That was crazy for Utah State. <laughs> we'll tell you more about that later. Uh, coming up on sports, Aggie football season is underway. We'll tell you how they've done so far and, let you, and show you exactly what they've been doing. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your step. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke.
Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping. Arm weakness. Speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. We did things to ourselves, uh, whether it was not getting to our aiming point or not paying attention to small details, that could have changed the course of the game. It didn't. They beat us. They're better than us. Ouch, that's some brutal honesty. That was senior offensive tackle Kevin Wimpy after the game at Tennessee. I'm Bradley Wells, and this is your Grizzly Adams ATV Sports Report. Let's get things started on the field where the Aggie football team ventured to historic Nayland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee with hopes of leaving with a victory. But playing in a stadium that was four times the size of their home field made this no easy task. Things started off well for the Aggies as linebacker Nick Vigil sacked the Volunteers quarterback on the first drive of the game. But it didn't take long for things to take a turn for the worse for USU as Tennessee scored their first touchdown on this run. Moments later on the ensuing kickoff, Kennedy Williams fumbled the ball while fighting for extra yards and Tennessee didn't waste any time making him pay, scoring with this touchdown pass on the next play, giving the Vols a comfortable 14-0 advantage and sapping the energy from the visiting Aggies. The Volunteers put on an electric performance for their sellout crowd of 106,000 orange-clad fans, crushing the Aggies 38-7. The Aggies' only touchdown came late in this game against Tennessee's second-string defense. We'll get back to Aggie football in a minute, but first, more football. The 2014 FIFA World Cup took place in Brazil during the months of June and July and Germany was one of the favorites coming into the tournament and proved it as they breezed their way through the group stages and made it all the way to the final. Argentina also made it to the final but their road was much more challenging as they relied on numerous last minute goals to win matches. In the final, Germany proved to be too much for the Argentine squad as the Germans went on to win 1-0. Staying on the pitch, we bring you back home where the women's soccer team hosted the Idaho State Bengals. The Aggies started off strong, scoring two goals in the first 16 minutes and netting a third before halftime. The Bengals kept things interesting in the second half, scoring two goals, but USU stopped their comeback attempt and even tacked on another goal for themselves, winning 4-2. We head back over to the American football field to bring you the Utah State Aggies' first home game. USU returned home to the comfort of Romney Stadium and their home fans to take on the Bengals of Idaho State. <clears throat> After a slow start and a score of 6-6 late in the second quarter, the Aggies finally mustered some offense and showed what the team was capable of. Driving 52 yards on eight plays, capped off with this touchdown run by Rashad Hall. Less than a minute later, JoJo Natson, well, he did what he is famous for. Scooped up this punt, ran back across the field and scooted his way into the end zone, giving the Aggies a 20-6 lead at halftime. USU never looked back as they tamed the Bengals, doubling up on them 40-20 to to earn their first win on the season. Good win because it's the first one and hopefully it's the first one of many. Um, a lot of good things out there tonight. Um, some maybe not as clean as we all would have liked, um, but I thought, um, you know, you found a way to win. Offensively, you know, I feel like we, we started off slow, but we began to pick it up in the second half. You know, uh, I feel like our problem is we just, we just got to execute a little better. The Aggies move to 1-1 one one on the season. Up next, they host Atlantic Coast Conference foe Wake Forest on Saturday at home in a whiteout game. This is going to be pretty exciting. I actually have a friend from high school who plays for Wake Forest, so I'm pretty excited to see him play and see our Aggies play, of course. They're near and dear to my heart. It's pretty exciting. It is. And the weather is going to be awesome. Indeed, so, indeed. For sure. Thanks, Brad. When we come back, you've seen drum lines, but how about a toilet line? It's all for a book. Aggie ice cream is rolling through campus. We'll tell you the most important thing about it, the schedule. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. 
Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know, you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 6922. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Welcome back. You might think that garbage cans and a few old toilets couldn't be much use to a musician, but a local author is changing that idea with his crew of jammin' janitors. These trash cans and garbage men are doing more than picking up junk. They're making music with it. It's all for the debut of the fourth book in the Janitor series by local author Tyler Whitesides at Logan High last Friday night. I've read one, two, and three. So you're I excited. really, really like them. And My favorite part was when he went into the kitchen and one of the gar jam and janitors popped popcorn. Whitesides and his fellow janitors used everything from kitchen utensils to school desks to toilets in order to make their beats. With the grand finale of toilet paper streamers and balloons, the show went off with a bang. Aggie ice cream is on the move and this year it's closer to you. The creamery has easier access to their ice cream. A bike with the Aggie goodness has been on campus the past few weeks bringing tasty treats to the students in between classes and showing off the new logo. We wanted to have better exposure across campus. There's a lot of people that have told us that it's too far away to just come and get ice cream. So we thought we could take the ice cream to the people across campus. We currently put six flavors in the small half pint cups and so all of those are available on the bike. It's very convenient. It's refreshing. The bike offers six different flavors, Aggie Blue Mint, Cookie Dough, Cookies and Cream, Lemon Custard, Caramel Cashew, and Cookie Fudge. Aggie Ice Cream is located in the Nutrition and Food Science Building and offers more choices in the shop. The bike is out on campus daily between 1 and 4 p.m. I, have you guys had the ice cream yet from the Aggie truck? I saw it the other day by the TSC and I was really tempted, but... Oh, it looks so good. Uh, I no, love caramel yes. cashew. That's my yeah. favorite. The I love thing, ice cream, but I actually yeah. haven't, I haven't even yeah. seen it. The yet. thing is, I don't usually carry cash around, so, mm -hmm. I mean... Exactly. I can't swipe my cash card. around anymore. Right. You carry right? cash? Exactly. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Have any of you never had Aggie ice cream? No, I have. Oh, have so you? many times. Oh, yeah, so okay. many times. It's not the truck. It's not from the, yeah. yeah. What Aggie yeah. hasn't had Aggie ice yeah. cream? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys should go try some Aggie ice cream. Yes, Thank indeed. you so much for watching us here on ATV News. Join us next week for another edition.